head and get started. In today's lecture, we are going to talk about traverse computations. So in the previous lectures, we learned what does it mean by traverse. Traverses are a series of established stations that are tied together by angle and distance. And the traverse, it could be open or it could be closed. We have a number of stations. They are tied together by angles and distance. Uh, and the traverse is very important to establish control point, whether you are constructing a road or you are constructing a building. So it's very important to understand the computations associated with the traverse. And the traverse computations usually involve includes inverse problem or coordinate of a point. In case of inverse problem, you are going to be uh, you are going to given the coordinates of two point. And it requires to determine the distance and the azimuth of that line. Is the first scenario. In the second scenario, the coordinate of a point you will be given the distance and the azimuth of a line and the coordinate of the first point and it's required to determine the coordinate of the other point. So regarding the traverse computations, we have two scenarios. We have the inverse problem and we have the uh, coordinate of a point. I'm going to walk you through uh, the uh, first, the inverse problem. So in the inverse problem, you are going to, to, to have the coordinate of the first point and the coordinate of the second point. We have a line here. This uh, represents a line of a traverse. Uh, the starting point is A, the ending point is B. And the coordinate of A is YA and XA, and the coordinate of B is YB and XB. In surveying, the letter I refer to the east, and the letter X refer to the north. So here, YA, is the coordinate in the east and XA is the coordinate in the north. So in the inverse problem, the X and Y coordinates of, uh, of two points, point A and point B are known. So we already know the coordinates of point A and point B. The first task, we need to determine the distance between the two points, the distance from A to B, we need to determine this di distance, knowing the coordinate of the point A and the point B. Also, this distance from A to B, the letter D, uh, stand for distance. And also, we need to determine the azimuth of that line. In order to draw the azimuth, since A is the starting point, we are going to set up the north at the starting point, and then we are going to close. Uh, we are going to move clockwise from the north direction toward the point in question like that. So this one represent this angle here represent the azimuth of the line AB. So in the inverse problem, you will be given the coordinates of the point A, the starting point, and the coordinate of the point B, the ending point, and it's required to determine the distance between the two points and also the azimuth of that line. So how to, 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 to determine the distance knowing the coordinates of the two points and also how to determine the, the angle here. The angle here represents the azimuth of the line AB. So first I need to get the difference here. The difference, if I'm going to draw a line here and a line there. So the distance here, the vertical distance, represents the difference in the uh, uh, x which means that the distance from here to here is going to be xb, xb minus xa. So xb minus xa is going to give me the difference here, delta xab. Similarly, we are going to get the, 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 the difference in this direction. The difference in this direction in the east is going to be yb minus ya, yb minus ya. Delta Y AB. So this is the difference in the east 
and here is the difference in the north. So if I know the distance from here to here and the distance from here to here, and here we have right angle, so we are in position to use the Pythagorean theorem. Since I know the distance here and the distance there. So according to the Pythagorean theorem, this one represents the hypotenuse. So the, 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 the hypotenuse is going to be the square root of, red, uh, of the difference in the east squared plus the difference in the north squared. The difference in the east is YB minus YA and the difference in the north XB minus XA. This is how we determine the distance from A to B. Also, it's required to determine the azimuth of that line, this angle here, alpha AB. So, also, we are going to use the trigonometry, simple trig trigonometry here. The tan of that angle here, tan of alpha AB, is going to be the opposite over the adjacent. And the opposite is YB minus YA. And the adjacent here is XB minus XA. And in order to solve for alpha AB, alpha AB is going to be tan inverse of YB minus YA over XB minus XA. And of course, this line is going to be uh, located in this quadrant, or this quadrant, or this quadrant, or that quadrant. We have four possibilities. If the line is located in the first quadrant, then the value of C here, like you can notice here, we have another term, plus C. The value of C is going to be zero. Because this angle here directly represents the azimuth of that line. But if that line was located here, then will you, what you will be determined is the angle here. So in this case, I need to add 180. The angle that I really want is going to be this angle. So it's going to, it's going to be 180 minus the angle I calculated from this equation. So if the line was located here, then I need to have a correction factor, C. So depends on the quadrant, the value of C is going to vary. Okay, so what we will do, here we have the, well, we're gonna name this quadrant one, quadrant two, quadrant three, and quadrant four, according to this textbook. If the line is located here, then the value of C is going to be zero. If the line located here in the quadrant two, the value of C is going to be 180. If the line was located here, then in the quadrant three, then the value of C is going to be 180. If the line was located here, then the value of C is going to be 360. So how, how I will be able to know the location of the line? Remember here, we talked about the difference in the north and the difference in the east. The difference in the north is going to be, uh, the, this difference, we call this latitude. And the difference in the uh, east, we are going to call this departure. So we have the departure, the difference in the east, and we have the latitude, the difference in the north. So, after I determine the, uh, uh, the distance, or before that, I need to determine the, the departure and the latitude. Because the signs of the departure and the latitude is going to show me the location of the line. For example, if the value of the latitude is positive and the value of the departure is positive, it means that the line is located in the first quadrant. Okay, if the value of the latitude is negative and the value of the uh, departure is positive, that means the line is located in the quadrant two. If the value of latitude is negative and the value of the departure is negative as well, then 
the line is located in the quadrant 3 and the value of C is 180. Finally, if the value of the latitude is positive and the value of the departure is negative, that means the line is located in the quadrant 4, in the fourth quadrant, and the value of C is 360 degree. Okay, so in order to know the value of C, I need to know the signs of the departure and the latitude. Here we have the staple summarize uh, how to determine the value of C, this value here. So if the uh, delta X and delta Y positive, positive, that means we, uh, we, are, we are in the uh, fourth quadrant and the value of C is zero. If the value of delta X, delta X here represent the latitude and delta Y represent the departure. If this one is negative and this one is positive, that means the line is located in, in the uh, second quadrant and the value of C is 180. If the value of the uh, uh, delta X and, uh, is negative and delta Y is negative, that means we are in the third quadrant here and the value of C is 180. And finally, if the value of delta X is positive and the value of delta Y is negative, it means the quadrant is located in the fourth quadrant and the value of C is 360. This is how I know the value of C. OK, so now again, in case we say that we have two scenarios, the first scenario is the inverse problem and the second scenario is a coordinate of a point in the inverse problem. You will be given the coordinates of two points and it requires to determine the distance and the azimuth. So we talked about this. We say that we have the coordinate of the point A and the coordinate of the point P. We need to determine the distance between them and also we need to determine the uh, angle and the angle here represent the azimuth of the line AB. In order to do that, I'm going to use this formula here according to the Pythagorean theorem. The value of the, the, the distance between the two points, the square root of the uh, difference in the east squared plus the difference in the north squared. We call this departure and we call this latitude. In order to determine the alpha AB, the azimuth of the line AB is going to be tan inverse, the uh, 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 departure over the latitude plus the value of C. We discussed how to determine the value of C. Uh, we need to determine the, the quadrant of the line. And in order to do that, I need to know the sign of the departure and the sign of the latitude then accordingly, I will be able to determine the value of C. Now, let's see an example so that we can connect all of this together. In example one, we, we will be given a coordinate of the point A. I have the coordinate of the point A and the coordinate of the point B. It's required to, 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 to calculate the distance between the, the, the two points and also the azimuth of the line AB. First, you can draw the location of the point A and the point B, uh, knowing the coordinates. That is going to help you to determine the uh, location of the coordinate, so that you will you will be able roughly to know whether your uh, answer is correct or not. Okay, because if you draw it like that, you know that the the line is going to be located in the uh, uh, fourth quadrant. OK, so this step is going to help you to know whether your uh, answer is correct or not. First, we need to determine the departure. The departure is YB minus YA. YB is going to be 15 and YA is 30. So the departure came out to be minus 15. And also we need to determine the latitude. The, the difference in the north, the difference in the north, XB minus XA. XB represent 50 and uh, XA represent 40. Remember, when we define this uh, uh, coordinates, we say the A is YA and XA and B is YB and XB. OK, so it's very important. So here we determine the departure and the latitude. The signs of the departure and the latitude is going to help us to know the value of C. 
and also to know the location of the line. So here the departure is negative. The departure is negative and the latitude is positive. It means that the line is located in the fourth quadrant. And also remember when we draw the line here, we already know the location of the line. OK, so it means that the location is correct. So since the uh, departure is negative and the latitude is positive, it means the line is in the fourth quadrant, which means that the value of C here is 360. The value of C here. The value of C here is 360. Also, it's written here. So now I know the value of C. I know the value of the departure and the value of the latitude. I'm going to apply in the uh, this formula according to the Pythagorean theorem. Uh, the distance from A to B is a square root of the departure squared plus the latitude squared, delta Y and delta X. Delta Y is minus 15. I'm going to uh, substitute here. And the value of delta X is 10. I'm going to substitute here. The distance came out to be 18. 0.027 meters. So the distance from here to here is 18.027 meters. Uh, now regarding the azimuth, the azimuth is going to be tan inverse uh, of the uh, 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 departure over the latitude plus C. The departure is minus 15 and the latitude is 10 and the value of C is uh, 360. Remember here you should you should put the sign as it is, okay? Because the angle here is going to be a negative angle, okay? If you forget to put the sign here, then your work is going to be incorrect, okay? So pay attention to this step. You need to put the signs as it is. Do not forget, do not put this plus 15. Any student uh, make this mistake, okay? So the angle came out to be 303 degree, uh, 41 minutes, 24 seconds. Okay. Also, let's solve another example. In this example here, you, we given the coordinates of two point, point A and point B. The coordinate of point A is 160 and the coordinate of the point B is minus 35 and 50. Again, uh, you could draw the this the location of uh, uh, these uh, uh, coordinates roughly so that you will be able to determine the location of the line. Then we need to determine the departure and also we need to determine uh, the latitude. OK, so here in this example, uh, I think the example does not exist here. Uh, maybe because the uh, PowerPoint is not going to support the equation system here. So you can solve this by yourself. So we need to determine the departure. The value of the departure came out to be minus 135. So this one minus that one. And also you need to determine the latitude is going to be 50 minus 60. OK. And 50 minus 60 is going to be minus 10. So the line is going to be located here in the third quadrant. OK, so the value of C is going to be 180. Then you need to determine, use the two equations. You are going to use this equation here. You are going to use this equation. OK, and also you are going to determine the uh, the distance, we already determined this and we already determined that. Then we are going to plug the numbers and also we are going to use this equation. We already determined the departure and the latitude and the value of C in this case is 180 and then we are going to get the answer. So we are going to solve this similar to the uh, first example. The main point, we need to determine the value of C. Otherwise, you will not be able to know uh, to determine the value of the azimuth. Now let's talk about the second scenario, the coordinate of a point. The first scenario, 
is the inverse problem. The second scenario is a, co a, co a coordinate of a point. In this example, or in this case, what you are going to, uh, you will be given the coordinate of the first point, the starting point. You will be given YA and XA. And also you will be given the distance between the two points. And also you will be given the azimuth of that line. What we want, we want the coordinate of the ending point. So in this scenario, you will be given the coordinate of the first point, the distance between the two points, and the angle, the, the azimuth of the, of the line. And it's required to determine the coordinate of the ending point. You should determine YB and XB. So what we will do in this case, also we need to determine the departure and also we need to determine the uh, latitude. But we will not be able to determine the departure and the latitude because we don't know the value of YB and the value of XB. This is missing and it's required to determine this value. But the distance from here to here represent the uh, uh, departure and the distance from here to here represent the uh, latitude. Then if I need to know the value of YB, the location of YB, first I need to know the location of YA. So YA represents the distance from here to here. So the distance from here to here represent YB, YA. And the distance from here to here represent delta YAB. Okay. What I need to determine, I need to determine YB. So YB is a distance from here to here. So I can say that YB represent uh, or equals YA, the distance from here to here, plus the distance from here to here, which is delta YAB. Okay. But I don't know this one. Okay. I need to determine this uh, value because YB is missing. Similarly, regarding the value of XB, XB is the distance from here to here, right? First, the distance from here to here is XA, which is given, and then the distance from here to here represent the latitude, okay? So I can, I can say that XB equals XA plus the latitude. Now we need to have expression for the departure and the latitude. We mentioned this, the value of alpha is given, right? The azimuth is given here, okay? And also the distance is given. The distance here represents the hypotenuse. And according to, to the trigonometry, the sign of the angle, if you have a right, uh, if you have, uh, if you have a right, uh, 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 if you have a right uh, triangle, if you have a right triangle like this one here, you are in position to use this formula and that formula. So since I have right triangle, I can say that the sign of this angle, and in this case, the angle is alpha AB, is going to be the opposite over the hypotenuse. The opposite is delta YAB, and the hypotenuse represent DAB which means that sine alpha AB equals delta YAB over DAB. And it means that the value of delta Y, the departure, is going to be sine alpha AB times the distance AB. So instead of the departure, we are going to put DAB sine, uh, uh, sine alpha AB or theta AB according to this formula here. Similarly, I can get expression for the latitude. This one represents the latitude. And since we have a right triangle, okay, the cosine of this angle, and, and here we have alpha AB. So cosine alpha AB is going to be the latitude over the hypotenuse, which is DAB, which means that the value of the latitude is going to be uh, DAB 
cosine alpha AB or cosine theta AB. Okay, so instead of the latitude, we are going to put this expression. So now the, the beauty about this expression, everything, uh, we, 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 we know the value of everything which is given for us. We know the value of YA, it was given for us. We know the distance from A to B, it was given for us. And also we know the azimuth here, okay, which is given also for us. Similarly, regarding X, B, the value of X, A, it's given. And the value of DB is also given. And the value of uh, theta AB, in this time theta AB represents the alpha AB, and it's also given. So now, if we are going to use this formula, we'll be able to determine the coordinates of the point B here. Knowing the coordinates of the point A and the azimuth of that line and the distance between A and B. So, if you encounter a case where it's required to determine a coordinate of the ending point, you are going to use these two formulas to determine YB and to determine XB. Now, let's see an example. We have this example here. Uh, it's given the coordinate of the point A. So the coordinate of the point A is given for us, 30 and 50. And the uh, azimuth of the line, not the bearing, the azimuth of the line AB, it's also given. Okay. And it, the uh, uh, example says, if you know that the distance AB is 18.027, the distance is given for you. Determine the coordinate of the point B. We need to determine the co coordinate of the point B. So this a case of coordinate of a point. We say that we have two cases. We have inverse problem and we have a coordinate of two points. So in this problem, the coordinate of the point A is given. We know the distance between the two points and we know the azimuth of the line AB and it's required to determine the coordinate of the ending point. We need to know Y, B, and X, B. So we are going to use these two uh, formulas here. Okay, if you forget about them, you can derive them. It's easy. Okay, or you can memorize them. Then we are going to use these two formulas. The value of YA, it's given for us, 30. The value of DAB is given for us, 18.027. And the values, uh, the value of theta AB represent the azimuth of the line AB. It's given also for us. Uh, so I know everything. So I'm going to substitute the numbers here. We have 30. I have 18. I have uh, the azimuth, 303. And the value of YB came out to be 15. Similarly, regarding the XB, the value of XA is given, which is 50. The distance is also given, and the value of the azimuth is given as well. So I'm going to substitute all of this number to the second formula, which you see here. Here I have 50, I have 18, I have 303. Then the value came out to be 50. So we call this case a coordinate of a point. Now we have example uh, five. This is a very interesting example because we are going to combine many ideas. We are going to bring ideas from the previous lecture. So here we have the line AB and also we have uh, the line BC. The coordinate of the uh, point A is given for us and also the coordinate of the point B is given. And the coordinate of the point E is missing. We need to determine the, the coordinate of the point C. The internal angle here is given. The distance from B to C is also given. So it required to compute the following. First, we need to determine the distance AB, distance from here to here. And also, it's required to determine the azimuth of the line AB. So I'm going to put the uh, reference here. I'm going to go to the line AB. So this one represents the azimuth AB. Also, it's required to determine the azimuth of the line BC. I'm going to put the reference here. I need to determine this angle. And finally, it's required to determine the coordinate of the point C, this point here. 
So regarding the first part, the distance from A to B, I have the coordinate of the starting point and the coordinate of the ending point. So I'm going to apply the Pythagorean. Uh, I'm going to uh, apply uh, the Pythagorean theorem for this case. So the uh, distance uh, AB is going to be the square root of the departure squared plus the latitude squared. So in order to determine this YB minus YA is going to be this one minus that one. Are regarding the latitude, this one minus that one. So I have this one minus that one came out to be this value. This value minus that value, it's positive. And this value minus that value also is positive. This one is 5. And the other one is uh, 57.150. So the value of the departure is positive, and the value of the latitude is positive. It means that the line is located in the uh, first quadrant. And it's clear here, the line is located in the first quadrant. So now I determine the distance between the point A and point B. And uh, also it requires to determine the azimuth of the line AB. We need to determine this azimuth here. And we are going to use this formula. The azimuth of the AB is going to be tan inverse of the departure over the latitude. We already determined the departure and we already determined the latitude and the value of C is going to be zero because the line is located in the first uh, quadrant and the angle came out to be 85 degree. And this one makes sense because it's less than 90 and it's more than zero. Also here it's required to determine the azimuth of the line BC. This one, this angle here. In order to determine this one, are going to get back to the previous lecture. We know the forward of the previous line. We know the internal angle and we'll be able to determine the forward of the line BC. So in the step number three, the uh, uh, forward or the azimuth or the angle BC, this one here, is going to be the forward of the previous line, which is uh, 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 85 degree and the internal angle, which is given for us, then we need to examine this uh, summation. And it's obviously this summation is more than 180. Then we are going to subtract 180. And the value of the forward BC or the azimuth BC or the angle BC came out to be 20 degree. And it makes sense because it's more than zero and it's less than 90. Finally, it's required to determine the coordinate of the point C. So in order to determine the, the coordinate of the point C, I need to know the coordinate of the previous point. Also, I need to know the value of the distance between them. And also, I need to, I need to know the azimuth. The azimuth is here. We already determined the azimuth. And the, the distance between the point, uh, between the two points is given here. And we know the coordinate of this point. So simply, we are going to apply these two formulas. The value of YB, it's given for us here. The value of XB, it's given for us here. The value of uh, BC, it's given 100, 100. And the value of the azimuth, we determine the value of the azimuth in the uh, uh, third, uh, uh, third part here, which is 20. So now I can easily determine the coordinate of the point C yc and xc so i'm going to stop here next time so in this example we have closed traverse we have like six points a b c d and e all the internal angles are given and the distances between the uh, uh, points are also given here uh, 350.10 represent the distance between from A to E. Similarly, the uh, 579.03 represent the distance between E and D. And here we have all the internal angles. And also the coordinate of the point A is given. The coordinate of the point A is 100, uh, 1000 and 1000. The value of YA is 1000 and the value of uh, XA is also 1000. Also, the azimuth of the line AE 
is given here. The line of AE is 152 degree 46 uh, minutes 12 seconds. And it's required to determine the coordinate of the following points. The point E, D, C, and B. So what we are going to do about it? So in this example, since the coordinate of the point A is given, and the azimuth of the uh, line AE is also given, and also I know the distance, then I'm in position to determine the coordinate of the point B. This type of traverse computation is called a coordinate of a point. Because uh, I have the line AE, I know the distance between them, I know the azimuth, and I know the coordinate of the starting point. So I can determine the value of E. Then what about the, the value of D? So in order to determine the value of D, I need to know the value, the coordinate of the point E. And also I need to know the distance. The distance is given. But also I need to know the azimuth of the line ED, which is not given here. Similarly, if I want to determine the value of C, also I need to determine the azimuth of the line DC. And so on. So the first step, for me, it will be determining all the azimuths for the traverse. So that when I'm going to determine the coordinates, I'm going to get all the uh, parameters. So here, in the first step, the uh, value of AE, the azimuth AE, is given. Okay. And I can determine the azimuth of the line ED. Uh, we are going to use the formulas that it has been used earlier. We are going to say that. The azimuth, the forward of the line ED, is going to be the forward of the previous line, which is AE, this angle here, plus the internal angle between them. Then I'm going to examine the summation, and obviously the summation is more than 180. Then I'm going to subtract 180. And here is the value of the uh, uh, azimuth ED, the forward line ED, this one here. I can of course, continue on the process like we have learned uh, in the previous lectures. So also we are going to determine DC and also we are going to determine CB, this one here, and also we are going to determine BA, this angle here, and also we are going to determine the value of AE as a check for us. And the value came out to be as the same as the given angle. So in this in step number one, we used something we have learned from the previous lectures. Now I can organize my work. I'm going to uh, write all the lines, all the courses, AE, ED, DC, CB, and BA. Here is the distance between the uh, 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 points. And here we have the azimuth for these lines. And also we have the bearing for them, of course. If we can express the uh, azimuth of the, this line by the azimuth, of course, we can express the same line by the bearing. We already learned how to do that. In step number two, we have the traverse, the closed traverse. Now I'm going to focus on the line AE. In the line AE, I know the coordinate of the point A, which is 1,000 and 1,000. And here I have the azimuth of the line AE. This one, it was given. And also I have the distance between the line AE, it's also given. Now I need to determine the coordinate of the point E. In this uh, case, I'm going to use the coordinate of a point case. Regarding the, the traverse computation, we say that we have two cases. The first case is, is the inverse problem, and the second case is a coordinate of a point. This is the uh, coordinate of a point. So I'm going to determine the value of ye and xe regarding uh, y, ye is going to be ya plus the distance which is dae uh, times sine the azimuth so in this one the value of ye is, is going to be the value of ya which is given here plus the distance between the uh, line ae this one here times sine of the azimuth which is given there so this one represents the value of ye. Also, we can determine the value of xe. The value of xe is going to be the value of xa, which is given here, uh, plus the distance, which is given, 
times cosine the azimuth. The value of the azimuth is here. So now I determine the coordinate of the point E. Now I need to go for the next point, which is D. Now I determine the coordinate of the point E. I need to determine the coordinate of the point D. So now we are going to uh, take this line ED, this one, the value of the coordinate, uh, the, the, the coordinate of the point E, it uh, we determine this one from the previous step, okay? The value of the distance between from E to D is given, and we determine the value of the azimuth ED. So now we are in position in order to determine the coordinate of the point D. We need to determine YD and XD. Again, the value of YD is going to be the value of YE, which is this one, plus the distance between them. The distance is here. Sine the azimuth, which is this angle. And here is the value of the YD. Also, I can determine the value of XD. The value of XD is going to be the value of XE, which is here, plus the distance times cosine the azimuth. And here we can determine the value of XD. So now we determine the coordinate of the point D. Then we are going to move in step number four. We are going to move to the next point. Here we have uh, the, the, the point C. In C, we need to determine YC and XC. And we already know the coordinate of the point D from the previous step. And we know the distance between them. And we already determined the azimuth of the line DC. So now we are going to apply the formulas for the coordinate of a point. The value of YC is going to be the value of YD plus the distance between them, then time sign the azimuth. Also regarding the XC, XC is going to be the value of uh, XD, which is given here, plus the distance between them, then cosine the azimuth. And here the values for uh, XC. Similarly, I'm going to move to the uh, point B. Here we need to determine the coordinate of the point B. So in order to do that, I need to know the coordinate of the point C, which we determine from the previous step here. And here is the distance between the uh, two points. And here the azimuth for the line CB. Now I'm going to apply the formula, uh, formula of the uh, coordinate of a point. Uh, the value of YB is going to be the value uh, is, is going to equal the value of uh, C, uh, X, uh, Y, C, yeah, plus the distance between them times the sign of the azimuth. The azimuth, the value of the azimuth is here. And we can get our value. Similarly, we can determine the value of XB. The value of XB is going to be the value of, uh, is going to equal the value of uh, XC, which is this one, plus the distance between them here and uh, times cosine the azimuth, which is here, and so on. Then in the uh, last step, that step is going to be like a check for us. Why it's, why it's a check? Because the, the coordinate of the point A is given. So now we are going to calculate the coordinate of the point A as a check. So here we, we are going to determine the coordinate of the point A. We already know the value of the coordinate A. But this step, uh, this step is a check. We already determined the coordinate of the point B. We know the distance and we know the azimuth. So the value of uh, YA is going to be uh, the value of YB plus here the value of YB plus the distance between them here, sign the azimuth, which is here. Similarly, we are going to determine the value of XA. The value of XA is going to be the value of XB, this value, plus the distance between them, uh, cosine the azimuth. And approximately, the value came out to be uh, 1000 and 1000. And that is going to confirm my result because the coordinate of the point A, it was given for us. After we finish, we can uh, uh, express the coordinate in this table. In station A, the value of Y, the value of X, and for station E, the value of Y, the value of X, and so on. We can simplify uh, this step so that you are not going to be confused. We can use a table in order to determine the value of Y and the value of X. 
Here we are gonna uh, write the all the points, point A, E, D, C, and B. And then the distance is gonna is going to be written between the two points. For example, for the line AE, here we have the distance between the point A and the point E. And here we have the azimuth for the line AE. Then we are going to determine the departure. Remember, delta Y represents the departure. And the departure is a distance times sine the azimuth. This one represents the azimuth. And also, I'm going to determine the latitude, delta X. The latitude represents L cosine the azimuth. Okay, so how to determine the coordinate of the point E? The coordinate for, for the point A is given. It was 1000 and 1000. Then in order to determine this one and that one, the value of, 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 of Y, E, this one, is going to be the value of Y, A, which is this value, plus delta Y. So this one plus that one is going to give me this one here. And the value of E uh, or X, E, this one, is going to be the value of X, A, plus delta x. Similarly, in order to determine the coordinate for the point D, this value and that value, I need to determine delta y and delta x for uh, E and D. And here the distance between them, and here is the azimuth for the line ED. This one is going to be the value of L, which is here, times sine uh, the azimuth, which is this one. I can determine the value of D, y. Also, I can determine the value of dx. The value of L is here, and the value of the azimuth is here. Here, I determine the departure and determine the latitude. Then the value of y is going to be this one plus that one. The value of x is going to be this one plus that one, and so on, until I go to the, to the uh, starting point, which is A, as a check for me. So this table is going to simplify my work. You can. Uh, use this table in order to determine the coordinate, or you can use this method here. So I'm going to stop here regarding uh, the uh, traverse uh, computation. If you have any questions, please ask me.